Mr. Quarles, both you and your wife have petitioned the court today for a DNA test for four-year-old Sierra Forrester. You claim that due to a one-night stand, you are now in financial shambles caused by child support for a child you don't believe is yours. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Forrester, you initially claimed Mr. Quarles was not your daughter's father, but you are 100% certain that he is. And when proven, you expect him to financially support her. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Quarles, explain to me, how has this child support issue caused trouble in your marriage? Well, we fight all the time about it. Um, it a car, uh, I can't get nothing in my name. Uh, my, my checks is only $40 to $50 every two weeks because my child, child support is getting taken out. So you are having child support garnished from your checks. Right. And this is causing problems in your marriage. Right. But you do not think this child is yours. No. Miss mm -hmm. Forrester, you put him on child support. Yes, ma'am. You gave his name to the court. Yes, ma'am. And is he on the birth certificate no, as well? No, I'm not. Mm. He wouldn't come Mr. up to the Quarles, hospital. Mr. Quarles, how did you it? even find out you were on child support? A letter got sent to the old house that we used to stay at that I had to go to court. I never knew that. It was a month later. The next thing I know, <laughs> I'm getting put on child support. I, I just want to know, how do they do that? I mean, how do you not, I mean, you, okay, you not show up for something because it was, you know, the mail went to somewhere to, my, to the other house, but how do I get put on child support and I ain't even... I mean, I ain't signed no birth well, certificate. I ain't doing, I mean... Well, you were named the father by default because you didn't show up to court. The address they had of record, the notice went there. You say you had moved. Right. But they sent it to probably your last known address. And then because you didn't show and it was... You were determined to be the father by default, they were able to take child support from your check, they garnish your wages. That's how it happens. Did you appear in court ever? Yeah. Did you request a DNA test? Yes. And you were what, denied? Denied. He didn't request a DNA test till two years ago. <laughs> because I asked the child support for a DNA test. They said no, that he has to be the one to ask for it. Are you up to date on this child support? No, ma'am. No. You don't make enough money to pay this child support. Exactly. They garnish so, so your I, wages. Yes, they garnish my wages. On that check, I, I mean, I got to do, I got to do other... But you have arrears as well. Right. If you don't pay your child support, you can I'm, go I'm, to jail. Yes, and um, next month, I have a court date oh. that they might just send me to jail for six months. Mm. All for a child that you don't believe is your biological child. Exactly. Because you missed a court date. Is it, yes. Yes, Sean. Ms. Forrester? Yes, ma'am. You say, you initially said he was not the father. Right. Then you changed it. Yes, ma'am. How did that happen? Because Miss Hernandez came up to me and asked me if he oh. was a father. I didn't want to cause any problems between their relationship, so I told her, no, he wasn't the dad. You were in a having a relationship with Mr. Quarles, even though he was in a relationship with his now wife. Right. That's a lie. How did that start? How did that even come about? We worked together and he came up to me and flirted a little bit and asked me for my phone number, so I gave it to him, and... That's a lie. We didn't have, like... I mean, it wasn't, like, no relationship or nothing like that. Were you intimate with her? Did you have sex with her? Yes, I did. Did you use protection? No, I didn't. So how often were you having sex with her? It was, it was just a one-night stand, Your Honor. Your Honor? One time. One it time. was not, ma'am. I... I took a lie detector test. Wait, you're saying that it was more than one time? Yes, ma'am. And you asked the court to administer a lie detector test? Yes, ma'am. Jerome, do we have those results? Yes, we do. So you volunteered yes, for a lie detector test because you say you had sex with him more than once? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Quarles, before I read these, I don't know what the answers are and what the results are, but I just want to give you an opportunity. Are you sure you only had sex with her one time? Yes, Your Honor. A one-night stand? One-night stand. All right. Ms. Forrester, you met with the court's licensed polygraph expert. Before I read them, do you believe you passed? Yes, ma'am. The questions were as follows. Ms. Forrester, you were asked, have you slept with Yura Quarles, that's Mr. Quarles, more than one time? You said yes, and the lie detector determined 
That was the truth. <laughs> Mr. Quarles, maybe you need to rethink this relationship. She may not know who she was sleeping with and just called them all year. Since she's saying she only did, was with one black man, but other black men at the same job claim to have slept with her too. Okay. But the other black men aren't named Yura Quarles. Yeah. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I'm talking about the slide detector. Your Honor, I remember, only remember it's, it's only been one so time. So you're going to maintain that you had sex with her only one time? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. You know, you know you're lying. No, I'm not Then lying. how did I pass that lie detector test? <laughs> I don't know. Ms. Forrester, what is your what I... recollection of the relationship? We slept together on and off for about three months. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And how often during that three months time were you intimate? About five to eight times. <laughs> so you're pregnant. You tell Mr. Quarles it's his child? Yes. What was she his told response? Her how first. No, I told Yuri first. He came over that night and I showed him five different pregnancy mm -hmm. tests. No, no, that's a lie. It's and you lie. told him? I told him that I was pregnant and he said that he takes care of his not to worry. No, the whole workplace, she, she's going around telling everybody that I'm the father and that's how, that's how really how she found out. She told that I was the baby, that I was the baby's father. So, you know, my wife goes up there and confront her. She says, no, I am not the father. So wait, Ms. Quarles, do you remember this encounter? Yes. I confronted him, I kicked him out. I went and found her wiping tables and I asked her, is, I said, I heard you were pregnant, is that yours baby? She said, no. I said, well, whose baby is it then? Do you think she was sleeping with other people besides well, Mr. Yes, she, Quarles? Well, yes, everybody's saying she was being prom promiscuous around the job, talking to different people. She was doing this, that. I don't know who she, what she does, really, because I'm a cashier. I sit in one spot. They roam around. There was only one girl who came to me the day after she told everybody when we came back from out of town. She, came, she said, I can't be like everybody else. I'm gonna tell you the truth. And she told me, she was just saying that was Yuri's baby that she's pregnant by. She told you she's running around saying he is her child's father. And then she got pregnant in the back seat. Mind you, he, had, he has a CD out, a song called Back Seat. Oh. <laughs> I also heard that around the job, uh, it was two other guys that came and told me that, that they had slept with her. At your job? At my job. Ms. Forrester, were you sleeping with anybody else besides Mr. Quarles during the window of conception? No, Your Honor. He says two guys said they were sleeping with you, too. It was two black guys. He's the only black guy I've ever slept with my whole entire life. That's why it's... What's the difference if they black, white, yellow, green? What's the difference? Because she's mixed. I mean, she's mixed, Your Honor, you know, so I'm just... So you're saying the baby is biracial? Yeah, the yes. baby, yes. Okay, so that's why you keep trying to pinpoint some other black guy. Right. Why did you lie to her when she asked you point blank, is this child Mr. Quarles? I didn't want to break up their relationship. But you could sleep with him. He slept with me. <laughs> Guess what? It's oh. a two-way street. <laughs> it wasn't but me by myself. You had morals, and you had morals when it came to me asking you I to didn't tell want to hurt the your truth. feelings either. You seem like a pretty nice lady. Why would I want to say he was sleeping with me? And again, if I'm a nice lady... I said, you seem like a nice lady. <laughs> How do you have morals all of a sudden? So you wait. didn't have all morals when you was opening your legs, but, but you But he morals can't have morals when, when he's sleeping with me? He has no morals. But let me ask you this, Ms. Forrester. So since you worked together, when you started sleeping with him, you knew they were in a relationship? Yes, ma'am. So what, what is the... Uh, I want to talk about this, uh, you know on and off morality. I, I mean, on the one hand, you're saying, I didn't want to break up their relationship by telling her that this could potentially be his child. But on the other hand, I am sleeping with him knowing that he's with her. She's a gold digger. <laughs> yes, she just want, you have she's just trying so to get much some of that money, money that I want, Mr. Quarles. <laughs> so I'm telling you. What money is this? I mean... At the time, he was in a record deal. 
and when and and really i didn't know he was in a record deal that's not why i slept with him that's for sure while you're having this child is mr quarles helping you participating in the no. pregnancy was he there at the birth no nothing no so sierra's born and you're still by yourself yes ma'am does he participate at all he's only seen her three times since she's been born and she's four now yes ma'am did you tell Miss Quarles, did you tell his wife you were taking the child to see him? I do not believe Miss Quarles knew that we, he was seeing her. Did you know he was seeing the baby? I knew about one time. But, but not by her. She, will not, she wouldn't talk to me. She blocked me from anything. He didn't even know that I was blocked. He thought I was seeing him the whole time. Really? Because he told me to block you. <laughs> yes, sir, no, that you is a, did. That, now, you no, know that, that is a lie. I he told blocked, that is he a, blocked. That is he was contacting her. me, and you said, just block her. I thought That's you did anyway. That is a lie. You're you a know that is a lie. You need the lie well, detector test. <laughs> Your mother's here, am I correct? Yes. I'd like to hear from her. Jerome, would you please escort his mother into the courtroom? Thank you so much, ma'am. You may be seated. Thank you. Ms. Finch, do you believe Sierra, Ms. Forrester's daughter, is your grandchild? No. Um, I came down for a visit uh, to visit my other grandkids, and when the first... Um, I was there when they first went to the child support office, where I was in the courtroom and uh well where I was sitting there I heard her over say like it might not be uh, my son's child so I was like why you know I I really got kind of upset but I, now you're saying it's not my son's child and now, now we're sitting here all this time this longer time and you're saying it's not his and I I just couldn't understand it so you don't right. think I don't this child is your grandchild no I don't I don't I don't see the resemblance now Okay, he has a picture uh, when he was young, but I don't see this with this kid. I don't see it. So, Ms. Forrester, she says she overheard you saying to someone that it was not his child. That's not true. I don't have to get up here and lie, you know. I don't have to lie Because uh, it's, you know... What do I have to lie about? I, because it's a, it's a kid involved. Exactly. And, you know, I didn't get to know my family, my mother and dad, you know, and I would like this kid to know. Okay. We're about to go to the results. It's time. Um, but before we do, I have to ask you. He says it's a one-night stand. You say this went over the span of at least three months. So during that three-month time, were you intimate with any other person? No, ma'am. Not that I can recall. Not that you can recall. Right. Not that she can think of. Jerome, I've heard enough. I'm ready for the results. Yeah. Here we go. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Quarles versus Forrester, when it comes to four-year-old Sierra Forrester, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Quarles, you are the father. Well, well, it makes me happy. I would like to see her. I have, like visitation rights, everything. No. What did you say, Miss Forrester? I said no. So them? now you don't want them to be a part of your child's life. My right. daughter's four. She has a dad. My fiance. She calls daddy. That's all she knows for two years. And now Mr. Corals wants to come into her life and confuse her. Hey, whose fault is that? Yours. It's his. No, it's your fault. It's your fault. You the don't want to possess no. the child. I asked him. I used to beg him to come and see her. No, but... listen, listen. So you basically just want to receive the support. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, I, I... You want the money. Right. Exactly. Don't want the man. Right. But you're going to deny your daughter the right to know her biological father and family. Till later on in life when she understands later and starts on. asking. So, <laughs> while I realize you made up this make-believe future in your mind, let me give you the newsflash. He has a legal right to see his child. A legal right. Thank you. Thank you. That's the way it goes. Thank you. Thank and this you. Is, is... I want to say this to you, and I'm going to say it as respectfully as possible. You had a part to play in this. Yes, ma'am. A very large part. Yes, ma'am. There will come a day where she will want to know her real father. 
Don't do her that disservice. You, you seem emotional, Mr. Quarles. What are you feeling? I don't know, it's killing me, man, because, you know, I, I ain't have a father figure when I was growing up. That's right. And for her to be missing these four to five, four to five years already, you know, and not, and not knowing who I am, it's, it's, it hurts me. Ms. Thomas, you and the defendant, Mr. McKee, met on an online dating website, and the conversation quickly jumped offline and into Mr. McKee's bed. You believed you were in a committed relationship with the defendant and was devastated when he denied your pregnancy. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McKee, you say that there is no way you could be the biological father of the plaintiff's son, Carson. You claim once you took a look at Ms. Thomas's son, you were 100% sure that her baby belonged to another man. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so I want to start with you, Ms. Thomas. Why do you believe you were in a committed relationship with the defendant? First of all, we uh, met on a dating website, mm -hmm. as you spoke. We started off talking. And then once we started knowing each other who we were, I started... How long did you talk on the phone? Maybe about a month or two. Okay. And then I started going to see him maybe like a 45-minute drive from where I live, like every other day. So I'm assuming, like, I'm spending the night, staying the night with him, things like that. So I'm assuming I'm... Making... And you have, you're having a good time, getting to know time. one yeah. another. Yeah. You all, obviously, since you're spending the night, already started having sex. Right. Right. And so what did you like about him? Like, what, what, what were you drawn to? He was kind? He his, was... his looks. He's, he's not a bad-looking person. He looks... <laughs> <laughs> he's funny. He's, he's hilarious. He keeps, he keeps a smile so on his face. So, he's funny, he's good-looking. Yeah, you he's, thought he's you had earth. met a nice right, guy. Right, right. Did it turn into a relationship at some point? Well, I thought maybe it was going to head that way, but evidently, he wasn't looking for what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. McKee, you having sex, having this relationship going, but you weren't feeling like making commitment. I wasn't ready, y'all. Okay. Say something else besides that. Uh... <laughs> no, really, Mr. McKee. Tell me about it, though. You, you know, a lot of times we're in situations like this where there are... Two people are on, a, on two different pages. And right. I hear a lot of times when women say, you know, I was committed to him, and then the man will say, well, I wasn't committed to her, or even vice versa. Sometimes, you know, the man is committed and faithful, and the woman is... Did you know Miss Thomas wanted to be in a relationship with you? Not really, Your Honor, but... Did you all ever discuss being in a relationship? No, ma'am. Oh, you didn't? No, ma'am. So what was it about her that you were attracted to? That picture she had online. Okay. So, you liked what you saw. Yes, ma'am. And so, as you were dating, you just didn't feel like you were, at that point, ready to have a commitment. Yes, ma'am. How long had you been driving 45 minutes to see him, Ms. Thomas? Oh, wow, about a month or so, or longer. So, about a month, you would drive to go see him? Like, every other day, I drive, like... In, at nighttime, I put my kids to bed. I go see him. Mm. Until it's time for them to go to school, I wake up and be back home before my kids wake. So, I have an older child, so she'll be home with them, but I didn't do it every day. I did it, like, every other day. And so, after this month, Mr. McKee, you're in this casual relationship. She's striving to come see you. You don't feel like you're ready to make a commitment. At some point, you find out you're pregnant. And when you find out, you call Mr. McKee and tell him? Yes, ma'am. And he thought I was just joking, like, playing, or just maybe just sick. So, maybe, like, a couple weeks later, I said, let me take a pregnancy test. So, I took a pregnancy test. I took a picture of it, and I sent it to him through text message. He was like, what is this? I like a pregnancy test. He said, I, I don't know how to read these, so tell me what that means. I say, I'm pregnant. He's like, oh, okay, so whatever you decide to do, just let me know. I believe that's all he said. <laughs> so, Mr. McKee, when you found out she was pregnant, what were you thinking, sir? Well, she called me when she was, like, three months pregnant. I know I got a phone call. I was at work, and I told her I'd call her back. But I end up blocking her number. Mm. <laughs> what? He, he blocked it after we had that conversation. After we had that really? conversation. Really? After, after, blocked blocked, blocked, after I blocked the number, she had to had the baby and called me from another number. So she called to tell you she was pregnant and you just said okay and then blocked her number? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Oh, you cold blooded. <laughs> so you blocked her number and never heard from her again because the number was blocked. Yes, Your Honor. And you didn't call him back again, Miss Thomas? I tried to keep calling. I thought maybe the phone was off or maybe he had, you know, low service or, 
just, you know, just turns off. So I kept trying, kept trying. I still didn't get nothing. I so happened to change my phone number, so he didn't know my new number. So, oh. Yeah. So after I had my baby... So, hold on, Mr. McKee, you never heard from Miss Thomas again during the whole pregnancy? I haven't heard from her, Your Honor. All while she was pregnant? All while she was pregnant. So you weren't there when the baby was born? No, Your Honor. So after the baby was born, you tried back again with I this new back number? Again, like a week later with a new number. And then he answered. And I told him I just had my baby. He still couldn't, like, really believe me. He was like, send me some pictures. He was at work then. He was like, send me some pictures. So I sent him some pictures. And he's like, that's my baby. Are you sure that's my baby? And then he looked at the color of it. Like, why he's the color he is. So wait a minute, Mr. McKee. When you got the pictures, what were you thinking? Like, this not my baby, Your Honor. I'm like, damn, this baby make number eight right here. Like, number eight for... <laughs> number eight for who? You or her? For me. For her. I have eight. Oh, That'd be number eight. So, number eight? So I'm kind of confused. Whoa. So did you know I she have... had children when you were dating her? Yeah, he knew I had kids. I didn't know she had eight kids, he did. you know. He knew I had... Kevin, this little boy make eight. Yeah. So, Mr. McKee, she sent you a text with the picture of the baby. <laughs> Your first response was what? The baby look like he can be for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Like, really? <laughs> oh. Really? I didn't expect that one. He, he, he thinks the, the color makes a difference. The color don't make a difference. I, I think what you're saying is you thought the baby was biracial? That's what you meant. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. <laughs> so when you saw the baby, you said, that's not mine. Yes, Jean. Not just because of the skin color, but you felt that the features and even the characteristics of the baby were of, of a child you believe to be biracial. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Because you know in this courtroom, we don't play around judging oh. kids by their skin color. You're right. But I'm trying to understand when you say it looked like it could be... <laughs> I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point... How are you feeling in your heart? Like, are you just so doubtful you don't want to attach yourself? If she meet me on a dating site, who else do you think she might be meeting? You feel like, because she has more than one child, that she potentially was entertaining a lot of different men. Right. That's what and so it's say. not just you she was sleeping with. Is that what you're trying to say? One month. Oh, now I get what you say. Okay, could you just talk? <laughs> trying to, uh... So, like, I'm trying to, uh... <laughs> right. It's like reading Morris Cole, pulling teeth and <laughs> everything all at once, trying to get a story out of you, Mr. Right. McKee. You thinking maybe she was already pregnant? Is that what you were thinking? Because it was only a one-month affair? No, it was a fair for longer than a month. It's just how fast it happened in a month. Wait a minute. Explain that. I, I meet you April the 1st, and April the 20th, we getting it in. It don't take long. Oh, because... you're saying it's because you she had sex with you fast. so quickly that you felt like, well, maybe this is the type of person or type of woman who's also having sex with other people. Well, but when we Online first started date. off, we was having... We was using protection. And he knew that. And he was like, uh, he wanted to without it. I was like, no, you know I'm fertile. I have... I just had a, a baby a year or two ago. So, you know I'm fertile, so I can't. So, this particular time, we didn't have anything, so... I get it. You don't have to go any further. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the, the point right. is this, though. I will say this, Mr. McKee. Once a woman tells you she's fertile, you believe her. Right. <laughs> no, really. I mean, if she already has seven children, that is a very fertile woman. I almost had a heart attack when I found that out. <laughs> I hid this pregnancy the whole nine months. You did? For my whole family. Because I didn't want to have another child without their dad. So the entire nine months, you went without the support When I went to labor, my family was like, what? You in the hospital having what? I said, I'm in the hospital having my baby. And you had no idea, Mr. McKee. No, man, I didn't know she was having a baby, Your Honor. But you look at that baby. He looks just like you. Just a different color. So she called you and told you she was pregnant and you blocked her he blocked number. Her. 
Now you see her in here crying because she had to go through this entire pregnancy by herself. She couldn't get in touch with you. And you just standing there casual like, it didn't mean anything to me. If that's your biological child, then what? You, you right, missed his in the entire beginning of his life. But what if he's not mine, y'all? What if he is not? I apologize if it's not. But I'm 100% sure. So when is the first time you met Carson? I think he was like a week old. So now when you got there and you saw the baby, talk to me about how you felt. The same way he's feeling now. <laughs> he questioning, like, are you sure? Is it mine? Why is his skin color? That's all he keeps saying. But he, he adores him, I'm not gonna lie. But he just questioned the skin color. That's like when we went and took the blood test, we stopped at a store. She went in the store for us. I grabbed a baby out of the car seat, take him in the store and sit down. So I had a lady walk up like, damn, that's a cute baby right there. Is mama white? You know, I'm not racist or nothing, but is mama white? And I'm like, this is mama right there. <laughs> so she, she was said, talking about daddy like, right white? In front of me, like, I'm, I'm the mom. I'm like, I'm the daddy. I, I was supposed to be the daddy, but we just took a test, you know, I know. She's like, babe, I, I pray for you. <laughs> that's what the lady that's said in the, the store? That's what the lady said in the store. Yeah. She was ready to get mad, but yeah. you... That's, that's the thing. I have to do that every day. You know. Somebody's like, is this mama white or is this daddy white? So you all can't even enjoy these beautiful, precious moments, these beginnings with the child, because every time you're walking around with this beautiful baby, somebody looks at either one of you all and tries to discredit the fact that you could be the child's parent. Right. My family say he looks like him by the nose and everything else. He snorkels when he sleeps like him. He grunts when, like him and everything else. They look alike. <laughs> Mr. McKee, when you look at the baby, in terms of the features, do you feel like there's a resemblance? My mama say... It can be mine, but my auntie says she need to find a dad of that baby. Okay, so even in your own family, the response has been... Right. It's odd. It's off. Carson's eight months eight old. Months. So you've been doing this all this time? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Well, <laughs> listen, this courtroom's about getting to the truth and I have to ask difficult questions. I need to ask you, were you with any other men during the time Carson was conceived? No, ma'am. All right. So, do you have any other kids, Mr. McKee? I have a daughter. You do? And so, this would be your first son? I have two more on the way. You, oh, you have two more kids on the way right now? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Right. With your spouse or your girlfriend? Girlfriend. Okay, so the children were planned. No. Okay. Can you talk about me? <laughs> so, you have, tw you have twins really? on the way? No, not twins, but... Two different so, women. Oh. Oh. You talk about me, though. <laughs> I just really? asked, were you having a baby with your girlfriend? They're oh. both your girlfriend? They're like two sisters. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Right. Did you just say you have two sisters pregnant in the same family? Yes, y'all. Wow. Mr. McKee, you right. up here lying. Are you serious? You me too. Yes, Your Honor. Two sisters in the same family, they both having your baby at the same time? Probably a month apart. Whoa. Wow. Mr. McKee, mm -hmm. please tell me you're not gonna end up in this courtroom again behind this <laughs> I might be, Your Honor. You might see me in the next 120 days. <laughs> It's not funny, but it's I not, just literally not, am not. like, oh, because you're serious. Yes, ma'am. You ain't said this much all day. <laughs> yes. So the question of the day becomes, when are you going to start wearing a condom? <laughs> you can't go on like this, Mr. McKee. That's three paternity cases going on at one time. These are babies. These are right. babies. Right. These are people. Right. These are little, beautiful yes. people you bring in the world. <laughs> it's not a sport. Just because I have eight, that don't mean I'm doing all that. I've been married. I'm a widow. So four of my kids is for my husband. It's not like I'm out here just sleeping around. Ms. Thomas, I want you to just take a moment and explain to Mr. McKee if, in fact, your assertion is true and Carson is his biological child, what do you want from him? Just... He, he's, he's a boy. 
boys need their dad. So just be there for my son. All right. In light of everything I've heard, we need to get some answers. We need to figure out what we're doing here. Jerome, we have this envelope. Here you go. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Thomas versus McKee, when it comes to eight-month-old Carson Thomas, it has been determined by this court. Mr. McKee, you are not the father. Huh. Are you serious? Huh. He is not the father, Miss huh. Thomas. I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm sorry. Do you know who Carson's father is? Yes. Like, my ex, before I met him. Did you know that and just want it to be Mr. McKee's? No, I didn't think of it at all. It was a time space in between. 